What's happening people? Welcome back to the Samazan channel. My name is La and today we're going to look at Lane 8's No Fun track, which I think is his latest release. I really, really like the track and uh, I made a little remake of it. So I'm going to go through some of the elements in there and uh, yeah, talk about some of them. So let's have a little listen to the remake. <laughs> Right, so let's go through some of the elements. Um, the main thing that we're going to focus on is the pluck, of course. But I'll just show you some of the other things as well, uh, briefly. So let's go to the kicks. So I've just layered two kicks on top of each other. With the original uh, sound, or the original track, I noticed this kick had this very uh, acoustic top end to it. So I had this like normal kick from Deep Premium Volume 6, just kick number 8, which is this one. I uh, ran a little bit of an EQ on it, just getting rid of some of the boxy frequencies here. So I'll just take this on and off. And then there's an auto filter here, which is getting rid of some of the sub just at the beginning. And then it brings it back in just around, I think it's here. It's here. So there's more, more punch coming in. There's a little bit of a drum bus on here, which is at 12%. I've added a little bit of a transient, some compression and a little bit of the boom, so it's adding a bit more uh, low end. I'll just turn this on and off. It's adding more volume, but it's also adding a little bit more to the transient. So I layered that with this top end kick, which is from Deep Premium Volume 6 as well. They've got these nice uh, top end kicks that you can add, and it adds that nice like organic feel to the, to the drums, or acu acoustic feel. So together, they sound like this and that's kind of what I noticed with his his kick it had that kind of feel to it everything in this uh, track actually sounded very acoustic like the bass sounds like a, an actual bass guitar even the pluck it actually sounds like a, a, a guitar of some kind um, so yeah it's actually it's pretty hard to replicate those things with just simps and stuff like that uh, but you can get pretty close so we'll listen to the drums as well so these are this is the drum group I'll listen to it with the kick So um, yeah, there's a ride loop, or not ride loop, a hat loop, which is also layering on top of the kick. So this one here. Same with this uh, this hat here, this closed hat. And that's what I noticed. Like it had this yeah this hat complement in it, just quite subtly underneath. Uh, so it's not a super strong hat. And I think I may have played with the velocity a little bit. Yeah. So I wanted it to sound as human as I could because that's what it sounded like with his his drums. Uh, so yeah, and then we'll go to this little um, drum fill, which happens every now and again. So this one, this was quite hard to get right. Um, it was just finding quite a few different samples to try and get it to sound as close as I could. But essentially, it's just uh, like some hats that are running on top of each other. Uh, these two here. And then uh, a couple of claps. And they just, uh, they're a little bit... Um, adjusted in timing so they're not landing exactly on top of each other as you can see here and uh, yeah that's as, it's as close as I could get it to the original little drum fill it's a really nice touch that he has uh, in his drums and then we've just got this impact thing here that happens um, kind of towards the end of each section and it just kind of like adds a bit of atmosphere to everything nothing too crazy to show there uh, this here is just a ambience loop, which I noticed is the same in his his track. Just this constant running of like noise, and I think I'm putting it through a really big reverb. Yeah, I'm putting it through this black hole reverb, which is just through um, Ableton. It's just a, a preset. I've just uh, put the dry wet to around 39%. Just to give it a nice bit of space. And then EQ'd out some of the low end here. This ambient is taken from uh, Deep Premium Volume 6 along with everything else that you 
you've heard in the drums. All right, so let's have a look at the main sound, the pluck, and have a look at the MIDI. So the magic in this sound is just this little note before the G, so it's the D here. It could be any note, but it's just this kind of flamming motion, that's what it's called, where you quickly just go between um, a few notes. Or you could do, yeah, you could do like that kind of thing, and that's what's going on on each one of the, the notes or each one of the uh, sequences. So we have this. And that just repeats uh, most of the time. And then there's a little change just in like the second half. It's a little bit later on in the original, but I wanted to show it uh, sooner in this version here. So we have this little change here. But all of the notes mostly stay the, t stay the same. It's just this uh, top note that changes, which just adds this nice bit of uh, character to the sound. So let's go to the sound design. Uh, I will just turn off the processing here and then we will make it from scratch or pretty much from scratch. I'm going to show you where I started from. If you don't want to see how everything's made from scratch, this is the sound design. This is how it's made in Diva. You could just uh, take a photo of the screen or whatever you want to do and then uh, recreate it. But I'll show you where I started from. So uh, the place that I started from was from Bound to Divide's uh, pack with Production Music Live, the Melodic House pack. And it's the pluck called duck this one here so let's have a little listen to it okay so the reason i picked this one is because i liked the space that it was in and i did like a little bit of the resonance it's a little bit too much resonance for the sound that we want but it's a very easy fix you can just bring the resonance down so we want a little bit of it there it's almost there like as it is but what we want to do is just use one oscillator this vco2 and add a little bit of a triangle wave yeah nice uh you can play around with the shape here so it's going to change the different shapes so we can go to analog one yeah that one's nice get rid of this lfo2 uh, which is just it's just modifying the waveform oh in fact sorry it's not because this is just set to vco1 so it won't make any difference the other thing that i added was a little bit of a sharp or quick pitch bend um it's just like a a, a it's like a punch that you're adding to the sound. That's what I kind of noticed in the original. I had this slight change in pitch, but very, very subtle. And so you do that here with this um, this tuning modifications. So what we can do is set this to VCO2, which is this one, and then increase this to around here. And then we need to go to envelope two and change this a little bit. So currently what we've got going on is envelope two is, is shaping the sound and it's opening the sound up. And we can just do it so that envelope one does that instead. So then we can free up envelope two to do some other modifications. So now envelope one is the thing that's opening the sound up. And we have this, uh, this pitch bending which is going on. We're just gonna decrease it. There we go. A little bit less. And the sound it sounds nice as it is, and I, for me, I would probably leave it as that, but to, to go a bit closer to the original, we want a little bit less decay and a little bit less release. So that way it's a lot sharper. Maybe we can add a little bit more of the envelope in and a little bit more cutoff. A little bit more release actually is quite nice. Yeah, I think that's good. And with this, we need to make sure there's no release or sustain going on. Otherwise, it's going to sustain the pitch bend, which means it will stay out of tune. But we're all good here. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is add a little bit more uh, resonance. And over here on the high pass filter, so you can add a little high pass filter before it goes through the main filter. Uh, we can just add a little bit more or take away a little bit more of the low end. And then we add a little bit of resonance. Yeah, nice. Hi, this video is sponsored by us. If you like these tutorials and want to support the channel, check out our website packed with online courses and professional sample packs. Also check our ready to use and club tested Diva presets. You can browse by the genre and style you're looking for or get the incredible deal with the full Diva preset button. Thank you for listening. And now let's get back to your tutorial. 
right, so let's have a look at the effects that are going on with the sound. So we have a bit of delay and a bit of a plate reverb. With the delay, it's quite thin, um, meaning that there's, there's an EQ on or a high pass filter on the delay, which is great. So it's just delaying that nice top end and, and kind of sparkle to the sound. And uh, the way that you set that up is if you say, if you just put your delay on and then say it was like this, you just want to bring this over and I'll just show you what it sounds like without that. So you can hear that the entirety of the sound is being delayed, which can just kind of make a bit of a mess. It can be quite nice as well if you want that to be part of your sound, but it can just make it sound a little bit muddy, especially if you have other things going on. So we want just like the pretty sparkly part of the sound to delay. So we just bring this over. And bring this side volume down as it's pretty pretty loud. A little bit less. Yeah, there's good. And with the reverb, so we have two reverbs on. We have a plate reverb on, which is here. And that's kind of just making the sound a little bit less um, dry and just pushing it a little bit more into the stereo field. And then the other reverb that I've got set up is just on the return channel here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Yeah, you can. And with this one, it's super, super wide. So I'm pushing the stereo field a lot more because I noticed that with the, the original that it was quite a wide reverb which was on there. But it's on a return channel. So it means that the sound isn't going to be completely drowned in, in reverb. It's just going to be doubled up on a return channel. I've got that sent through at 100% and we can have a listen to it on its own. I've actually got a, a clap or something going in there as well. So it's just adding that nice bit of space in the in the in the stereo field essentially. And that's pretty much it for what's going on with the sound. All right, cool. So let's have a look at the processing that's going on afterwards. It's only uh, three things. Just an EQ here, just making sure we're getting rid of any of the real lows. So nothing too important here. I also dulled the sound a little bit. So just did a slight uh, EQ null, uh, which is just gonna make the sound a little bit less bright. Just because I noticed in the original it wasn't as bright as uh, as I had it, and then with the amp here, so I feel like in the original uh, he was using a guitar or something, some kind of guitar pluck, something like that, or maybe he used a synth and then just put uh, some amps on it, which is something that I do um, in a lot of my music is I try to like turn a synth into a guitar or something like that, and you can do it with. Uh, the Ableton amp it's quite good but it doesn't quite get it there you can also add other things like the um, what's it called the pedal and there's a cabinet and things like that but I didn't feel like it, it gave it the right tone so yeah with this amp it's adding this kind of meatiness to the sound and also this kind of guitar feeling <laughs> It's also kind of compressing the sound and uh, making it louder. But it's nice, it really has a, a really nice touch to it. And then with the compression, this is just so that the sound is a little bit more even. There's parts where the sound is super loud and then parts where it's a lot uh, quieter. We wanted it to be a little bit more consistent. So now the reverb is louder and the the individual notes aren't just shooting up in volume and, and pushing the volume up. There is it's a little bit more even in volume in terms of like the whole sound. So yeah, let's have a listen with everything. I think one thing is I might make it a little bit less open with the envelope, so we just bring this down. Yeah, there we go. All right, guys, so that about wraps up for the main sound and uh, a lot of the main sounds in this. If you guys want to see the bass, I can show it in another video just because it might take a bit of time, so uh, I can't go over it today. But uh, let me know in the comments and I'll cover it. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and you took something from it, please let us know in the comments and leave a like. Also, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out some of our preset packs, which I will link down below. So the preset that you can grab, which is similar to this through, uh, from Bound to Divide and Production Music Live, I will link it so you guys can uh, go and grab it. Cool. Thank you very much, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.
Hi, this video is sponsored by us. If you like these tutorials and want to support the channel, check out our website packed with online courses and professional sample packs. Also check our ready to use and club tested Diva presets. You can browse by the genre and style you are looking for or get the incredible deal with the full Diva preset button. Thank you for listening and now let's get back to your tutorial.